Good morning everyone! Welcome to a new Super 69 EV film. My name is Tom and today, as the title suggests, I want to talk about Tesla. If you're a small content creator like me, you sometimes will have the situation that you're working on a video, it's almost done, you're basically done editing and some news comes out which just wiped the complete video totally away. That's what happened to me this week. Uh, I was making a film about Tesla, uh, lowered the prices of the Model 3 again in the Netherlands. And I'm going to talk a bit more about it later. Uh, but I was also speculating on the new, yet to be revealed, Tesla Model 3 performance. And while I'm editing and getting ready to render the movie and upload it to my channel, lo and behold, Tesla introduces the Model 3. Puff. Okay, bummer. So basically my movie was useless and I didn't post it for that reason. So I had to make a new one, which I'm doing now. So let's start with the Model 3 performance. There are um, two versions of it. Last time around there was only one version for the, for the whole world. This time around the version for in the US and the EU is different. US gets 510 horsepower and the EU 460. Uh, that's because of the battery packs that are in it. The US version will be built in the United States with the Panasonic batteries and uh, the EU version will be built in China and I say EU version, it's the version for the rest of the world, will be built in China with the LG packs and uh, therefore the version for the EU and the rest of the world only has 460 horsepower, 3.1 seconds to from 0 to 100 and a top speed of 262 kilometers an hour. But more importantly, in the Netherlands, base price only around 57,000 euros, which is cheap for what you get. You get new seats, you get a new, uh, complete new suspension, you get new bigger brakes, you get new forged alloy wheels. It's, it's very, very competitively priced. I'm sure it won't ride as good as, for example, a BMW i4 M50, because that's just way more premium car and a Polestar 2 is probably also a lot nicer as as is a Taycan or those way more expensive cars but on a euro per horsepower basis it's a really really enticing proposition and I'm sure Tesla will sell loads of them because if you're in the market for a quick EV and you want the performance and you want track mode and you want all-wheel drive and you want everything that makes a quick EV fun, I think this is the one to get. And it's still a lot of money, of course, but in the bigger scheme of things, I think it's very, very cheap for what it is. Speaking of which, uh, I, I won't be getting one in the short term unless every one of my subscribers still gets a thousand people to subscribe and to watch my videos and to get the ball rolling and shoot me into the stratosphere of the YouTube algorithm, then I might be able to purchase one and trust me, I will. Uh, but as long as that's not the case, I won't be. What I am looking at is the base Model 3 in the Netherlands. Tesla lowered the prices this week again on Monday with a thousand euros. And you can now get a new Tesla Model 3 for only 39,000 euros. And you get a new car. They deliver it to you in two to five weeks. Knowing Tesla, that's probably closer to two weeks than five. But it's insane value for money. You get the LFP pack, you get on the, nine, uh, on the 18 inch wheels, you get around 500 kilometers of range, six seconds from zero to 100, top speed of 180. Yeah. What more do you need in a car? It's, 
I would like a blue one with a white interior, but that adds uh, around 26, 2700 euros. And I think the move, if you get a Tesla, the move right now is to get a white base one because it's, it's ultimate bang for the buck. It's an enticing proposition. I think if you are in the market and you look at what the competition can offer, like at VW, you get a base ID3 or ID3 with some options. And uh, BMW, where I work at the moment, doesn't even have a car that starts around the 40,000 euro mark. And Volvo EX30, well, yeah, everyone knows how I think about that now. And it's just way too small. It's on a completely different scale. If you're looking at the space you get, the software you get, how frugal it is, because I watched Harry Metcalf's review and he weighed it on the 19 inch wheels and it was only 1,780 kilos, which means if you get the 18 inch wheels, it will be even lighter, not by much, but a bit, a couple kilos, and it will be even more frugal. So I think if you're thinking about getting an electric car and you want to make sure that it is, is as easy as it can be because it's it's never it's still not as easy as a, as a petrol powered car or diesel powered car i think getting a tesla model 3 is like almost a no-brainer you get range you get the supercharger network you get great software you get a good enough car for the money it has double pane wind, double pane glass windows. It has pretty okay seats, very minimalist interior. Yeah, of course the buttons on the steering wheel aren't perfect by a stretch, but they they have to cut cost on some points, and it is the reason Tesla can offer you a car for this kind of money. And of course, I know there's a lot of people now watching telling about or, or screaming at the computer and yelling yeah what about the residual values what about if you want to sell it after four years because the current model threes are falling off a cliff and yes they are they are and they should because for a long time they were too expensive a lot of leasing companies are moaning that they are way too uh, that 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 because of the low, lowered prices of Tesla, the residual values are under pressure. But those same leasing companies made bank in during the pandemic and there was a scarcity on cars. So you win some, you lose some. And I get that they rather have the Tesla would only have upped their prices. So they got strong residuals on them. But to be honest, if you have like a Model 3 for four years, you drive 160,000 kilometers in it. Do you expect that it will be worth a lot? Come on, you, you have, in the Netherlands, we have this, this scheme called baytelling. It's, it's a tax on private use. You had a lot of advantages in that and you didn't pay that much for the car in the first place. So I think, I don't see it as a very big problem. The only reason I'm not on the Tesla configurator right now is because I still love my BMW i3s. It's perfect for what I'm using it for. It's perfect range-wise for me. It, it just works. It wouldn't be ideal if I would have to do multiple 400 kilometer days in uh, longer stints in, in, one, in one hit where I would be driving down to, uh, uh, for example, Frankfurt, and then spend the day there and drive back, then that would, those, those things, it, it wouldn't be good for, because you just have to charge too much. But for what I'm using it for, 180 kilometers single journey, charge it up, drive it home, full again. It's just magnificent. But I'm keeping an eye out, and if, something were to happen something would crash into this or something or it would got stolen i would not hesitate and buy a tesla model 3 base with the lfp pack 
immediately. And if you help me subscribe by subscribing and watching the videos, a Model 3 Performance might be on the cards eventually. So let me know what you think about Tesla. Would you get one? Wouldn't you? Why not? Why would you? Let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a nice day. Bye.